Hello, my eggy peeps. I can't believe it's actually here, but it's episode seven of Here and Now with Bud and Fluff. We've got a ton to talk about. I actually have a sheet of things I'm going to talk about with Fluff, and I usually don't have any notes, so it's going to be a good show. And with that, I want to say, Fluff, what's on your mind, buddy? Not much, Mayor Bud. It's good to see you again so soon. Always. Always. Uh, yeah, we're going to kind of pick up a little bit where we left off, finish up on the end of that tour they just finished, and uh, and there's some other pretty cool things that we're going to be able to talk about as well. Uh, where I wanted to kick off was obviously that show you and I both attended in Chicago. Good times. Uh, Good times. Yeah. Um, you, uh, you guys uh, came in a day early, and uh, I know you had some time to really settle in and, uh, and adjust to the area. What did you... You know, what did you think of that whole experience? I got to say that was probably one of the best um, places like I've been in a big city with, with Eggy. So, yeah, I mean, thanks for the question, really. Um, I was a little worried. I've been all over the place with these guys, my wife and I have, uh, and in some pretty shady places, not going to lie. I was a little afraid of Chicago just because of the sheer size of it. It's, you know, several million people. And... Um, you know, in Brooklyn, you're kind of like in a little enclave, but this neighborhood was was solidly good. I mean, it was just nice little bakeries and stuff. So, yeah. It was a super nice neighborhood for yeah. sure. And that yeah. was my first time seeing a, in the state of Illinois. Um, so that was, again, for me too. Uh, I'd been in Chicago, but it was many, many years ago. Um, and that was actually the 13th state that I've seen Eggy in. I know wow. that's way behind you. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't counted. I never really counted. But that's well, it's all on the cart, and it's not like, you know, I just right. can go look it up anytime I want. So, uh, But, no, that was great. And then uh, one of the best things, too, about that show is we got another houseplant opening set, and that was just uh, – yeah, I mean, that's kind of – that was, you know, one of the big um, kind of – it was the part of it that pushed it over the edge for us to make sure we, we went out there. Cause it was a long, a uh, long slog for one show. Um, but we did drive all the way back in one straight shot. Um, yeah, yeah, eight, eight, 18 and a half hours, uh, all me, <laughs> uh, you know? Yeah. But it was a good time. The amount of deer out there where you live in Ohio. Oh man. Let me tell you, just as soon, like, whew, as soon as it got dark, you could just see them all coming out to the edges of the highway and feeding, yeah. you know, just waiting. But yeah, that show, um, yeah. Can I read the set list? I happen to have it right here. Please in my do. Formerly nicotine stained hands. It was uh, November 2nd at the uh, chop shop in Chicago, Illinois, which happened to be an old uh, body shop. It was an old auto body shop that had been converted into a pretty cool little nightclub. Uh, so it was one set. They opened up with sweaters uh, into a moment's notice. And then it was apology into woe there. Uh, then they did Smile, Remind Me, Laurel, One Stop Shop. Then they did a Queen's Gambit into One Stop, back into Queen's Gambit again. There was an Encore, which was uh, Sweet Judy Blue Eyes. Uh, then they did Waiting Game and an Eggy Birthday Song. And um, one of my favorites, Zug Zwang, which is, mm -hmm. a, is a great closer because you can sing along with it, you know, for the few words that there are. And you can just kind of like yell it, you know, Zug Zwang. Anyways, uh, but there's a lot of notes on this one. Um, the first note is that woe there was unfinished. Uh, the second note was that that was, uh, remind me is an Emily King cover. Of course, Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young, uh, was the, um, sweet Judy blue eyes cover. Right. And then they did teases in that of like new speedway boogie and Cassidy and a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, you had of course, Jake on acoustic with that. And that box that Alex sits on, the cajon. <laughs> cajon. cajon. You, you know, cajon. Kind of cajon okay, so, so we're going to uh, call it the cajon. That's, you know, I could see where you were going with that, and I agree. And then um, the birthday was for one of the other reasons I came out there, and I didn't even barely get a chance to talk to him, was <laughs> to, you know, face-to-face -face say happy birthday to CJ. Mm -hmm. and, and Mighty Quinn, Chris Quinn, who I've now been acquainted with for quite a while, uh, going to see him, you know, seeing him at shows, you know, taking right. pictures and stuff right. to see him officially be kind of incorporated now into the group is great. Uh, I I'm sure he's a really strong addition to the team. So I'm psyched for that. But yeah, uh, that upright bite bass is like a dream come true if you're a bass enthusiast too, you know. Are you a bass enthusiast? 
I, I I tend to lean towards Mike's side of the stage. Yes. Uh, I, th- I thought if I could ever play an instrument, it would be a bass, uh, which mm-hmm. is probably selling the bass short. Uh, but, you know, you start with four strings and, <laughs> you know, yeah. I suppose you still have to learn music, which, by the way, I can't wait to talk about um, that uh, that Halloween show. Mm-hmm. So, so what did you but think of heading, Chicago? We're heading for it. No, you, you hit it on the head. It was, um, for me, especially the encore. I mean, the, the, the set was, was great. I was actually texting Mike Rothschild's live updates in case he wanted to post them. Although it was like an hour ahead, I don't think he was. But yeah. and then at one point, you know, when they got towards the end, I said it's one stop shop. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, no wait, no, it's Queen's Gambit. I'm like, no wait. And now I'm like, okay, I don't even know anymore, man. Because <laughs> you know they were just kind of going back and forth. Totally. And uh, it was getting later and later. I was a little bit extra tired that night, but I still fought through it. Uh, but awesome. that encore, that encore made the whole trip worth it for me. Sweet Judy Blue Eyes is. I mean, I'll say that's my favorite cover they do of Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young, yeah. and then I get screams in both my ears, going Southern Cross, carry on, you know, and it's like, well, okay, all three then, you know, but it was really, really good version um, with the teases. Um, Jake set the place on fire at one point just with his vocals. Mike blew the roof off at one point with his vocals. Um, that was, that was amazing. And the waiting game to get that acoustic was also really special. One of my um, favorite. Yeah. Yeah. So the first time I ever saw that was acoustic, which was the first song I ever saw them do acoustic at the basement in Nashville. And, uh, of course it was kept secret for the longest time, had no idea it was going to be the name of the album or anything, which was uh-huh. just so, uh, fitting, you uh-huh. know, <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, the venue, what do you think of the venue? I, I was I was pretty happy with the venue actually. I mean, it had the uh, you know the upstairs. It had space. Uh, as far as you know, I mean, there was I could nitpick a few things, but other, I mean, I've been to far far worse, so I really have you know no strong the, the, feelings either way. Right, that's cool. The um, when you said you know you were sending Mike um, notes, right? That first of all warmed the cockles of my heart because the first thing I thought about is like how the network kind of like stays together you know and you're like feeding information to people that can't be there i wasn't going to stream it and i decided to take my phone out and go for it um but the taken like when i first started to when i made this youtube channel uh it was to do eggy reviews right Mm -hmm. and uh i kind of like went on this kind of ride where i would just do it ad lib after a show and then i started bringing like a notepad and uh trying to take notes and that only lasted like a show and a half before I said, listen, I just have to let the music take me away. Like it, what got me to this passionate place was just being there. And I, I even realized today, like my eyes are closed probably 80% of the time that I'm actually at the <laughs> concert. You know, I go there to see them, but you know, right, I right. just really just need the speakers to be that loud. <laughs> I don't have a stereo that loud at home, you know, but, uh, um, so I've done this, I've gone through the same thing now and I don't even bother to like take notes anymore. I, I feel weird having my phone out, like, you know, in the front row, texting notes to myself about the show. Like, this is an amazing remind me like, no man, put your phone in your pocket, you know? Hey, and, I, I'd rather you're in the front row doing notes on the show that maybe you can bring back and we could talk about here later as opposed to Jesse, who's buying and selling cars in the front row. <laughs> right. <while they're, laughs> uh, I'm sorry, Jesse. I love you, dude. But, um, but no, seriously, I mean, I'm, I'm on my phone too. It's a preference thing. It's like, what, whatever you want to do, you know, I don't want to get totally to, you know, I don't want to make too many rules for people. It's like, you want to be on your phone, be on your phone. But I, I think that, um, I grew up writing handwriting set lists at the fish shows and stuff like that. And then one day I was at, you know, a show I'm going, Hey, now we got these phones in our pocket. I could just type it in. So I do keep set lists on my phones. Um, but as far as set notes or show notes, those just go in yeah. my head as long as they last. But yeah, back to this. I mean, the the happy birthday, that's a big part of why we went as well. Again, CJ is CJ is the glue in, in a way. I mean, he's been there mm-hmm. since the first time I ever saw them. And mm-hmm. you just you just can tell he's just this great spirit and this, this fun, mm-hmm. happy dude. And, uh, you know, to be able to celebrate his birthday and uh, Chris's birthday on the same day, you know, like you said. I'm going to echo what you said to see Chris be the full-time photographer now is awesome. He's a great guy and I think he does great work and I think he fits the team perfectly. 
Yeah. You know, and that's another thing that, that we saw and that you got to see. You saw it in Colorado. You saw it again in Chicago. This team really has gelled. And uh, there was, you know, the merch guy, Sean, too, who did wonderful things and then became on Halloween Mr. Silly Putty. Mr. Right? Silly Putty, yeah. So I think that's a good way to kind of jump yeah. over to that Halloween yeah. show. So why don't you kind of get us into that a little bit? Oh man, I'm not even sure where to start except that um I I wait, you know, I saw the most of the premiere on YouTube when they did the actual unveiling of the video and I was just in sheer awe of these guys being in costumes uh you know, Colonel Mustard and just like you know, and taking their taking those jams so seriously being so silly like, you know, like it was just very endearing. Um, well, those were some serious get-ups. No, no question about it. Um, right. Yeah. Uh, last Halloween, I talked to Alex before a show um, about costumes, and he mentioned that you know, especially as the drummer, he had to be conscious of function. Like he'd love to have an elaborate costume, but you got to be able to play drums and and you know, smash your brains out for a couple hours. So. Uh, his costume was perfect for, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. it even had like a metaphorical kind of an addition to it with the, you know, cause he's like a twister back there. Right. So, yeah, he sure is. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, the creativity, I could gush, I could gush about that show, just the creativity behind it and the, the uh, conciseness of the actual playing too. Um, now I presume that you've already seen the video. Right. It's two and a half plus hours, I think, which is, yeah. you know, that's like such a healthy serving, you know, um, when they did the musical chairs, uh oh, stand by folks, you can leave this out. You don't have to edit this out. This is just, um, this is just, I had dinner and, uh, my diabetes, blood sugar. yeah, my diabetes alarm is going off, but it's got to keep an eye on that blood sugar. It's important. Uh, well, you know, the insulin's at home. We'll go home and take some. You know, so if I begin to sweat, you know, it's not that it's warm in here. It's just, <laughs> I'll be fine. I promise. But yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do the John Belushi, right? Um, <laughs> anyways. Uh, yeah. The creativity. And then, so also watching them each take over another instrument and just, they could have stayed in those positions the rest of the night. You know, it was amazing to see. I think Jake always kind of leads, leans towards the drums. Um, kind of like maybe his other go-to, but to see Mike pick up the guitar and just like, you know, jam away and, uh, to have Donnie and it was just, I don't know. It, it almost brought a tear to my eye. It was so damn cool. You know? Well, you, you hit, you know, a couple of things that, that I wrote in my notes, um, that I, that I would start with is my overall take is the creativity is reminiscent of a band I grew up following like crazy fish and, not only that, but one of my greatest fish memories was watching them do an instrument switch. Mm -hmm. It was a New Year's run in 96. Uh, I was in Philly, and all of a sudden, Trey goes over to the drum kit, and I thought they were going to do the vacuum, because usually when he did that, Fishman would come to the front. But no, Fishman went over and started playing the keys, and then picked that up, and then Paige went over and grabbed the bass. And like, so I'm like, oh, you know, and the, and the crowd went crazy, and they did it again. The crowd went crazy. I've listened to that show over the years. You wouldn't know. You know, you wouldn't know. That's how talented they were. Same thing with Aggie. You wouldn't know they were trading instruments if you didn't see it. Right. You just listen. It's it's really remarkable. So, you know, and that's that's kind of something also that I, if you didn't see it, you wouldn't believe it or, or, or realize it. Mm -hmm. I, I listened to that show when it hit Nugs, which was before, a couple of days before we got the video. And it was hard to listen to. Not that the music, there was anything wrong with the music. But the stopping and starting and the talking and the it, it, it's choppy and it's weird. And I kind of had this, I'm sure it was fun kind of vibe, but I'm like, I don't quite get it yet. But I, I will also say that I knew that we had the video coming. I just didn't mm. know exactly when. As soon as I was able to watch it, it changed everything. And now I can listen to it. I did again today. I listened to it without watching, but I could visualize and I could mm. see. So I thought that was just interesting because I've never really had that aspect right. with listening to an eggy show where i needed to be able to visualize them for it to work better true and, and I, as i mentioned a few minutes ago like i have my eyes shut for a lot of the show most of the time so i sure. don't you know when they're fit when like mike and jake are facing each other sometimes or doing their little things i'm i'm 
I'm so into the jam. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even aware until I kind of can sense something's going on. You know, people mm -hmm. make some noise in the crowd or whatever, but exceptional show, right? I mean, the creativity alone, the work that went into it, you know, the, the creating the Mr. Silly mm -hmm. Putty character and just all of that, the wheel. And um, I heard Mr. Silly Putty was kind of a last minute thing, actually. I believe it. I believe it, uh, you know, but the, um, it could have all been pretty close to last minute. Like they have such creativity and it's their wheelhouse or, or I suppose um, that's mind reading. I don't know what their real wheelhouse is. Excuse me. Oh, sorry about that, but it sure looks like creativity is it. So, um, I would imagine maybe they didn't need a whole lot of prep time. They could have done that, you know, been thinking about it all and then just kind of whipped it out right before the show. I think their creativity is limitless. So yeah, I think yeah. That, that they have the potential to have, have pulled this together as quick as they needed to. Right. Um, knowing these guys, it could have been in the works and just in the back of their heads for, for a while. But, you know, to, to go back, if, if anyone didn't see exactly what they were doing, uh, Jake and Mike had dressed up like characters from Candyland and Alex dressed up as Twister Man, a Twister board. And Donnie was Mr. Colonel Mustard from Clue. And the games they played were, you know, some worked out really, really well, mm. like the musical chairs where they switched instruments. Some were a little kind of like, okay, maybe maybe that one wasn't like the best one. Like when they did the, the silent game and someone in the crowd went, woo, like two <laughs> seconds later. <laughs> it's like, okay. So, they, yeah, they played the silent game against the crowd. Well, you know, but I, it's right. fun. They don't care. They're going to go for it. They have no – they're never going to – like, oh, we probably shouldn't. They don't care, you know. I mean, they're just like, we're going to go for it. If it, fall, if it hits, it hits. They like it. They like it. But they played Simon Says. They did Pin the Tail, which was bizarre to see during a concert. Uh, Bop It, which is that annoying game. And Alex kept yelling out commands. It was hysterical. A staring contest. Yeah. <laughs> Truth or Dare, which is just, I mean, wild. And and then and then to finish it off with the with that Jenga with with uh, Mr. Yeah, Putty, a silly, silly Putty, and yeah. and and and, uh, and Donnie played Jenga against each other, and it was right. and, and the suspense. The the rest of the band was doing the soundtrack, and it was it got, kept getting building and building, and that's their specialty, anyways, building the jam, right? right. And so, yeah. And at the end, they, what did they play? Four or five songs in the costume part of it, but they were like all know, twenty yeah. some minutes long. Yeah. Because of all the goofing around. What do you got? Yeah. yeah. I got the list. Yeah. Set two was Wayless, Southern Cross, and Woe there. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> you know, the. Uh, it's than like 24 minutes, right? Yeah, right. Exactly. And then the encore was 12 pounds of pain. The um, What I liked about the truth or dare was that they all took the dare. And I think, yeah. that, you know, that wasn't. Well, they took truth. Uh, yeah. But um, then, you know, when Alex was playing with his feet and stuff, that was kind of weird. <laughs> like you said, That's some of it. That's insane, is what yeah, it is. Right. Some of it, some of it worked out, some of it didn't. But. Uh, you got to give them like, like you were saying, you know, I did have a couple of flashbacks too to like, um, you know, fish back in the day, the, the comparisons, even though the, the music isn't the same, the, the, the spiritual stirrings are the same, you know? So it's pretty cool to see that. Um, I mean, I've then, been drawing those lines between them and fish since I found them and some people don't want to hear it. And I'm not trying to do it in a way of saying, that they have to be associated with one another. It's like you just said, it's, it's like, it's just, it's the same spirit. And I never hesitate because I know that they grew up going to shows together. I know that they're fans. Right. I know that they like it. It's like, they're not going to have a problem hearing that. If, if fish didn't exist, I'd compare them to the Beatles. There just happens to be a great band in their genre that, that you can parallel to. But if there was a vacuum of jam bands, they're the next four most talented people in the in the in the pipeline. Well, you know, you and I think that. Well, sure. yeah, I mean, but this is an <laughs> echo chamber, right? Nobody tuning in wants to hear anything otherwise. So might as well speak the truth to the people. You know what I'm saying? But uh, speaking of that, just one quick minute on um, Houseplant. So yeah, this is an eggy show. But uh, for anybody that's looking for, like for another band out there, they are definitely worth a listen. So. Well, they did. They that wasn't just Chicago where they they opened again. Um, you know, this was the a, a really strong finish to that five week waiting game tour. It was the night before Chicago was Louisville. Uh, House Plan opened that show as well. Played a solid hour. We only got forty five minutes in Chicago. It's what it is with an opener. Uh, but the night before that was this Halloween show. So it was Halloween, Louisville, Chicago. Boom. I mean, that was three right. nights of just pure energy and passion. And they, you know, I mean, they really. 
they they never leave anything on the road ever. And <laughs> and, and what I got was like a half an hour with Tavis, basically yeah. almost one on one in the in the lounge area before the show. You yeah. know, got to I think you were standing there, right? I got to ask him a bunch of questions about. Um, you know, his, like, what were his influences and who did he listen to growing up and how did he start playing the mandolin versus another guitar? And, um, you know, he said drums, I guess, was his primary instrument and that the, wow. mandolin, yep, the mandolin has similar rhythmic, um, you know, like you can, you can, you can plant the things from drums in, in, in fundamentals into the mandolin, I guess. So he was able to understand the, um, the similarities and marry them up. So that's why he's such a good mandolin player. Well, so that was the third time in the last several months that House Plan is open for Eggie and I, and I were with them for them. And, and I, I am whispering in everybody's ear that I can find. They should do a tour together. So hopefully for all of our sakes, maybe one day that'll, that'll come true. But uh, yeah, it's, I think they just complement each other very, very well. And, uh, you know, before we went to Chicago, I did put a post in Green Eggs and Bam about you know hey if you're going but get there early and there was a great great response just great response yeah so, and and so all oh, that reminds me so tickets did you already buy your tickets for the uh for the upcoming um winter shows uh, yes i have acquired my tickets for the shows in ann arbor and grand rapids which are the only ones i'm positive i will be going to was there seating options or was it just GA? I believe they those two were GA. Well, Ann Arbor's Blind Pig, which we went to this oh, yeah. year. So there's no seats. So there's a few in the bar. Yeah. <laughs> you and me both, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a life, you know? <laughs> we should all, you know, we should like group purchase a camper and then when they're out where you are, you can use it. And when they're up this way or when they're out where you are, I can use it. And when they're up this way, you can use it, you know, and then uh, we can rent it out to other eggy people in west of the Mississippi. I'm getting ready to just get one and live in it. <laughs> you want to talk about the tour that they announced? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know, I think I'm, we've got five shows we're going to go to. Is it four? Or is we're going to do all the ones around, like within proximity of kind of where you are. So, so you're doing the first four, which are Ann yeah, Arbor, Grand four. Rapids, Madison, and Minneapolis. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. All right. And then we're going to drive from Minneapolis to Youngstown um, to draw on the drive home. It's it's two twelve hours. Woo, Youngstown. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's a hotel there we like so. <laughs> I mean, there's got to be something worthwhile there, but it's not much. No, it's a hotel that's on a golf. <laughs> it's it's like a Marriott that's on a golf course, you know. Mm. So, well, there's a, I shouldn't say it's on a golf course. It's next to one, so it's kind of nice and quiet, and uh, they have a good restaurant. So, It'll for be- those who don't know, Bud and I are super duper team Marriott. <laughs> we're for big time Marriott. You know? Right. Yeah, so. Eggie, Eggie announced the Here and How Winter Tour 2025, mm-hmm. first real serious dates of 2025. Uh, and, and again, we, like we said, it's kind of a little Midwest, little four show run. They love those four show bursts. That's, and we've seen that. I remember them saying that a couple of years ago and they've kind of stuck to it. Uh, so you get the four show burst, then they got a couple of days to get across the country and then it's Seattle, three nights in Oregon, mm. four show burst, mm. right? Pacific Northwest. Uh, there's a one-off in Crystal Bay, Nevada. I guess maybe they want to go to Vegas for a night or something like that. I'm not sure. Uh, and then they go for a four pack in California working their way down the coast from Berkeley, Felton, never even heard of that, uh, to Los Angeles and then Solana Beach. Mm. Um, They've played Solana a couple of times now, right? Mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. A one-off in Salt Lake. Yeah. And that's their only their third time playing in Utah. I checked that out because I didn't know if they'd ever played in Utah, but can't keep them all in my head. I've been there, yeah. Closing the tour, last day of February in Frisco at 10 Mile, which I t- would love to try to get to that. Uh, and the last night tour, March 1st in Boulder, where you wow. saw one of your favorite shows. Favorite shows, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was just talking about it with a friend of mine the other day. He asked me, uh, of all the shows you've seen, you know, like what what's the first one that comes to mind? I did say Oxford was my first one. <laughs> it just had such an impression on me. And um, But that that uh, Boulder show was next. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was a doozy. But that's a, I mean, that's another good tour. They're getting some more really solid time on that hard West Coast, you know, that left coast. 
And I think the more that time that they could spend out there, the better. Um, don't know if you agree with that or not. Um, because the West Coast has such a influence on people, I'm all for it. You know, it can, it can only enhance their life experience, which will in turn enhance our experience as long as they continue to be the conduit from their lives through the music to us, right? So go West, young men. <laughs> you know, bring back the fruits of your labor to us, uh, f- you know, um, uh, forlorn uh, Eggy fans on the East Coast that are waiting for you to come back next spring and and light up the cities from Atlanta to Bangor. Now, you just said it. I mean, it's, you know, only a couple of days after they, I mean, tickets just went publicly on sale today for this. And we're like, OK. Need that spring tour now, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just, you know, what's next? Can't stop, won't stop, like I always like to say. So, uh, But they also did say stay tuned for more dates and exciting things when they posted that. And they also um, let us know about a couple more festivals that they're going to be part of, too. So starting to pick up for sure now the, the next year's plans. And, and picking up is it. I think this is the first time. And the reason I was asking about the tickets is because this is the first time I feel like you need to hurry up and get the tickets. They could sell out like fast, you know, you don't know how big the venues are and you don't know really how I believe that where they're going, there's plenty of demand for them. So the locals are going to be buying those tickets up, you know what I mean? So, um, you know, I can't, we hope so. (laughs) Right. But you know, a year or two ago, you could wait until the weekend of, or the day of, you know, and and I'm glad you're bringing this up because again, hate to, say their name again but after years of trying to chase fish tickets to really popular ones hard ones to get your hands on i kind of had a little bit of excitement when i first got into eggy because i'm like i don't have to chase these tickets you know i don't have to stress i can wait till the day before right Uh, your your band your favorite bands people they don't want you to wait till the day before the show to buy the tickets trust me but you know but that's besides the point so yeah I, i i love that fact that i knew i didn't have to worry but let me ask you do you do the pre sales ever or do you wait I do do the pre-sales. Do you think it's cheaper ever? I think it might be by a couple bucks sometimes because, you know, when you go, yes, it it definitely can be, but it's not by much. It's under going to, it might be 10%. You know, of the face value of the ticket. Yeah, but if you see 40 bucks. shows in a year, if you it see 40 up. shows in a year, do the math. It adds <laughs> up. It adds up. There was a point when the tickets were cheap and I would buy extras because. Like if the ticket's sixteen dollars, and I had budgeted sixty bucks for the two for the two of us, then I'm gonna buy those other three tickets and just give them out. Or if nobody wants them, well, then the band made a few extra bucks because, or somebody made a few extra bucks. I don't know if it was them or not, but uh, a few people made a buck. That's right. You know, the idea is right. I was, you know, you're just supporting them, you know. So when they and were, that's like the mayor of Eggytown right there. They're under. They were undervalued. They're starting to get in line a little you bit. Both said that. I mean, that's one of the things we used to say to each other all the time before we were like, we should start to maybe <laughs> tell other people this stuff too. Right. Yeah, they were way undervalued. Way and still are. Again, no, I don't want to complain about that as a consumer, but I love them so much that I wanted to pay them more. It's ridiculous, you know. It's kind right, of which is why you do things like buy the shirts, right? Uh, you know, the merch. You know, yeah. yeah. So that's that's something that um, I think I got to. Uh, I forgot to link to that on the last the last upload on YouTube, so I got to put our our link cloud up in there that has the link to the tickets, the band website, the um, the merch, merch and all page that. and yeah. all that. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, I mean, we got it. We got to give back to them because they give so much to us, and not just in the music, but as you and I know, in the relationships, in the interaction. Um, none, perhaps, more interesting or exciting than what they did last night and green eggs and fam kind of out of nowhere. Did you catch that? So that was the, um, that was the little, that was a little bit more of that truth or dare, I think, right. Where they said, Hey, give us a set list. Right. And you never know. That was something I've never, you know, I can't say I've never heard of a band asking fans for suggestions, but they were just like, let's have some fun. Let's get some fan engagement going. And I think that's the best part about it. But yeah, they came out and they said, Hey, Show us some set lists. You never know. And uh, that was all we needed. We were off to the races. Right. And you never know because there could be one particular combination that just one of them just says, oh, that's it. That's that's what we've been looking for. You mm-hmm. know, 
it's really a good way to poll. It's almost like a secret poll because someone can run the stats on the backside of that. What do people want to hear? Right. You know? Yeah. So that was smart. Very good. Well, I almost went in and posted that picture that I got at Hookahville last year. Remember the goof set list they gave me that day mm. or they gave it out to people play what they don't want to hear. Yes. I almost posted that, but, uh, I, uh, I had, you know, it's a dream question. Let me, I mean, I actually did get to write part of a set list for a band once, uh, for ALO, uh, which was a pretty cool feeling. So, oh, wow. Uh, yeah, to think that there's a chance that one of the I put out two, yeah. I gave them two options to think that one of those could ever even get considered is awesome. You know, lists are one of your wheelhouse things, right? Like right, right before the show, you asked me if I did a list yet and I haven't. Um, I get, you know, I could do the list and then I'm going to want to reorder it, you know, right afterwards. So. Uh, I've been a little reluctant to put one up there, but I think it would consist right now of a lot of new songs, mm -hmm. a lot mm -hmm. of new songs. I might just do, you know, covers and new songs, you know? Well, Would there you... was, I saw a lot of different stuff before we, uh, before we sat down, I checked in, there was already, there was over a hundred replies and that's in wow. or comments, you know, and that's in less than 24 hours. Uh, but there, I mean, and, and again, I think that, that that's just, great fan engagement it was a lot of fun uh pat threw out uh, an, uh, one of his and i was talking to him about it he says he was just having a blast going through reading them all did any, know, did anybody um put down like an album just like a whole like like the white album or whatever did, did... Uh, uh one guy suggested a pink floyd album he said just do a pink floyd album and i and i gotta say i'm surprised nobody called me out on it but my little uh onitsuka set that i did i don't know if you saw it but it was an onitsuka to open the show and and it and that's unusual to begin with. I don't you know to open a show with Onitsuka, uh, but then Mike did a narration. I would have Mike do a narration where he took a walk one night after a show. I saw that. Found a strange secret door. Walked through that door and found a time machine. Hopped in the time machine. Boom! He's at Listener Auditorium, 1977. Little Feet's playing, because I've been asking them to do Waiting for Columbus in its entirety, which they did like once way back in the day. They have no record of it really. It's not right. like it's just. But and I just thought what a great way to to make it happen. And that again was uh, years ago in 1998, Fish did a Harpua that led into the entire dark side of the moon. So kind of took a little page out of that, but I think that would be a hell of a good night. Um, and then the, the kicker on mine was the uh, Skin It Back encore. Uh, Cause for those who don't know, Skin It Back wasn't on the original Waiting for Columbus, but though, but Waiting for Columbus was recorded over like seven different concerts mm. and it was performed as part of the performance in some of them. So later on when they were making extended versions, they put skin it back in there. Interesting. So Interesting. Be a great encore on that, on that set. But anyway, That's there were cool. people that did theme sets. There were people that did um, <clears throat> some that just went way, way, way deep. Some that were mm -hmm. short and simple. I saw someone that wrote set one jam, set two jam, <laughs> encore something, you know? <laughs> and uh, I think Ross Childs was like, one set was, uh, must come. It was all. It was like a theme, and his encore was like right. graceless, wayless, wireless. It was all. So yeah. you know, everyone had a lot of fun with it. You know, there was yeah. a lot of Mitsukas too. A lot of easy, very easy to ad lib a set, and also easy to sit down and construct an actual like banger. You know, that's your uh, real, your real dream set. You know, Stephen um, Clifford, yeah. he, oh, that yeah. man wrote. He wrote the teases out. Man, he was he was fine tooth comb in that thing so yeah it was again cool to see <laughs> just everyone's different take on it okay. having gotten to know you as much as i have i'm not surprised you haven't done one yet you're too scared that someone might hold you to it uh, <laughs> it's okay one. though i, I mean it's just one. it's you could do it, what strikes you in the moment or you can sit yeah. down and, and, and obsess over it but either way have fun don't you know i mean that's that's the most important i think it would be it would be a lot of the new songs um and then it would be a bunch of covers Maybe a couple covers they haven't done yet. Um, you know. I kicked myself because I meant to put Illuminate on mine and I and I forgot, but that, and I was really mad. But uh, my other one, you know, because I, I did the, the crazy Onitsuka one, but the other one I really did, you know, I, I the Here and Now opener because that's kind of a special song to us, and all that you dream just to that I, that song just makes me want to just feel real real good about everything. 
And then the letter to myself moments passed. That's actually something they did at the Charlotte show last year. Um, they didn't do all of moments past just the ending of it, but letter to myself is just like something about taking stock and just, mm. just give it like, just, just look at it and, and realizing where you're at and moments past is about letting go. So it's like, it's a, this, this set just built to that, like kind of a theme. And then one more dance means you always have another chance. You know, there could always be another chance at things. And then shallow rivers is just, you know, I mean, you got to throw that in there because they've been jamming the fuck out of it. <laughs> tell me, tell, tell me, tell me you have a philosophy degree without telling me you have a philosophy degree. All right. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fine. Time yeah. escaping island yeah, after life. There's just a little influence there of, uh, you know, deep introspection and, uh, you know, life's questions. Well, my encore yeah. wasn't introspective. My encore was this is just going to fucking rock. Yeah. And it was Ricky Gervais into Rozzy, back into Ricky Gervais, mm. into Psycho Killer, mm. back into Rozzy, back into Ricky Gervais. So, and, and I would just, that could just be the whole show for me. I would right. be pretty stoked about that too. Right. I wonder if like, and so here we are throwing song lists, set lists out and mm -hmm. it could be like trying to put a Chevy alternator on a Ford motor. Like it just won't work. You know what I mean? And we're just throwing out shit and they're like, these people are building platypuses. We can't do this, you know? You know? <laughs> I, I wonder, but that woe there. I, so woe there, oh. the lick, the guitar lick in that, I feel like the song was written around that, hmm. but. Donnie's keyboards are so strong in that song. It's just, I mean, it's like a Donnie song, even though I really feel like it's Jake's song. It's uh, the last couple of versions I listened to, especially that one, um, the Halloween show was mm -hmm. just, oh, Don Donnie yeah. is just like, I, I don't know. The kid is Elton John. Donnie's magical. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Well, I read a poll actually about a week ago or so, maybe two weeks ago now in the group about what is your favorite of the new songs. Well, there was two to one over the next closest. So yeah, it's, I don't, it's, just it's got the licks. Life. It's got the licks. It's got the, it's got the sing along. It's got everything, you know, it's, it's like all their other new songs that came out that are kind of of that tempo, you know, they all have that. I don't know. Do you, when you're driving down the road, listening to Eggy, do you make noises like the, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, like, you know, like, like waka 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 or something. I don't know. Like, I'm driving down the road and they're, and they're jamming and I'm like, you know, do 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 bop bop bop, do 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 waka waka waka, you know? I don't know. I just, I do that. So I don't know if that's just me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Good, good, good. All right. So I'm not the only one, you know? Well, you know, um, I'll say to anyone, I can't blame you uh, for saying that Will There really stands out the most or grabs you, but uh, don't, don't, don't forget about beaming. Um, and if you're, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, then go find beaming and listen to it. I've heard it. I've heard it like once, uh, but, but I have not, uh, you know, made it a purpose to go back and listen to it some more because I have woe there filling my ears right now. And, uh, I've kind of been just listening to that a few times now. And I really, it's really, great. it's great. And, and they've already played it also like several times and jammed the heck out of it. So that's yeah. awesome leave a, a bigger imprint on got, people. got to see it in chicago which was yeah. which was like the um the uh culminating event of the night for me i could have gone home after that we've been we've been saying this for for a while let mike sing yeah beaming that's all i can say okay beaming i'll have to check it out more he definitely should sing more songs well, well he sings like that and it's fucking fantastic. That's cool. I like when he does the deep purple. Uh, uh, what song is well, it? You know, and, and when we hang up, hang up. Why are we on the phone? <laughs> we can hang Go up. Go back yeah. to the, the sweet Judy Blue Eyes to Mike's verse. Yeah. And listen to the crowd when it's over. Chills. It's chills. It's they're in a pocket, man. Like, I know this is a little bit of an echo chamber because all we ever do is talk about how great they are, but oh my God, are they so good right now? And they, I, I hope they know it. I hope they're appreciating this and not like, you know, I, I, I struggle with self-doubt when, when I'm doing things I know how to do. And so I can imagine how, you know, they might feel on a stage, like, you know. I'm willing to be wrong and I'm willing to go out on a limb and say that they do know, but that they're trying with every ounce they have to stay humble and know that nothing is, is owed to them and it all has to be earned and that they have to keep going out and grinding and giving us all they have. But I think they know 
that something special is finally happening that they always knew could be there. And I think they're driving on it. I think that, yeah. And that Colonel Mustard outfit really says it all. It's just like, if you can go out and play like that with that mustache and that, like, just like, <laughs> wait a minute. You uh, see, you're grabbed by that one. I was grabbed by Mike's because it looked like it was just giant boobs all over it or something <laughs> like that. And it looked very puffy and heavy and uncomfortable, right. and yeah, I was like, how is he even but playing in that thing? He looks that way without a costume. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Uh, so, <laughs> sorry, Mike. <laughs> he knows. We love them all. We that's love them right. all, they that's know right. that too. That's right. Well, on that note, I think that's- Two the, weeks, two weeks, baby. I know, I can't wait, man, I can't wait. And, and for everybody that actually made it to the end of this episode- Thank you. Thank you, yeah, thank you all for listening. I hope it was fun and uh, reach out to us, you know, give us a shout. We can be reached on Facebook or any other social media and uh, we hope to see you at a show because that's what it's really all about is getting to see these guys uh, on the rise and in their prime which I think they're going to be in for quite a while. So.